beginning of the 90s, just after the fall of the Soviet Union, and the horrific earthquake in Armenia, and the conflict with our neighbors, it, there was, it was a situation that forced a lot of people to leave. And my parents were among those people. They wanted to give us the opportunities they knew that we wouldn't have in Armenia. And they moved our entire family to, to Dublin. That's where I grew up. I went to school and I went to university studied international finance, but a few years after graduating and working, I realized that wasn't my passion. I guess you could say I came back because I was trying to find myself and find my identity and find out who I was and what I wanted to do with my life, because I knew what I didn't want to do. We have a big wave of migration from the country. Most of our today's diaspora has been formed after the genocide, so those who survived left partially to Armenia, but some of them went to the Middle East, to France, to USA, Canada and many other countries. And those who left Armenia after the independence in 1991. So we have very diverse diaspora, 7 million people living in more than 100 countries and 3 million people living in Armenia today. Four friends and I, on a very random weekend trip, dropped by a number of villages in Tavush which is a region in the north of Armenia that borders Azerbaijan. We've had a, a long-running frozen conflict, should we say, with, with this particular neighbor. So the issues that most villagers have and most people that live in rural areas have are compounded again with the security issue as well. So, so one of the major issues is the lack of arable land. And that stems from the fact that the communal lands that they had once are now under direct sniper fire. Some of it is mined as well. We decided if we were going to live in Armenia, if we were going to work there, we wanted to set up an organization that would help. And we really just started with one idea, five people, and that was it. So Sahman NGO was established in 2011. With the help of family and friends and Armenian communities in a few different countries, we were able to get enough money together to build two greenhouses. And now, seven years later almost, we have over 40 greenhouses in seven different villages. Everything that we've done over the last seven years with Sahman has been on a purely volunteer basis. With like a little push and this little support, they can have a very stable income and they can support their families and they can remain in their villages because essentially they are the keepers of our border. And if we have depopulation, then, you know, maybe not now, maybe not in five years, but Somewhere down the line, we're going to have very serious problems to deal with. Objectively, it wasn't very easy to, to create so many jobs after the collapse of the Soviet Union because all the economic connections between different republics have been broken and Armenia was pretty much industrial uh, and high-tech country at that time, so all the connections collapsed and we went into the war, there was an earthquake, it was difficult, but I would say that for the certain period of time, the government was considering uh, migration as a good thing because uh, there were decreasing social tensions through migration. People were leaving the country but sending money back. But now when it understands that there is a national security issue, that we need more people in Armenia, and in general, when you have migration, you decrease your market. You get a lot of these kind of inequality issues in the society, uh, the poverty, and many other things are becoming systematic and migration becomes systematic. Now they are becoming really concerned about migration and they start thinking about repatriation. If you look at the role that repatriates are playing in today's society, both political, economic and social, they are becoming pioneers in absolutely different sectors, especially the young generation with that. Although the conflict itself is considered a frozen conflict, um, unfortunately um, there are certain escalations every once in a while. The school that you see is in direct line of fire of um, 
snipers from the other side. And although we'd like to think that, you know, children should be off limits, unfortunately that's not the case. So this wall was built so that the kids during recess could come and play here and be completely safe. They don't have the same opportunities that our kids in Yerevan have. They can't go to all these after school activities, so we bring the activities to them. And we bring teachers from surrounding villages and from regional centers. Armenia is a country that we can be proud of and we want to have our children grow up here and have all of the opportunities that they would have anywhere else in the world. I think it's really important that people who have uh, the knowledge, the expertise that they've gained outside of Armenia, um, these people return and invest all of this knowledge. My hope is that what we do now, so the development projects, the support to these uh, villagers and to, to the schools and to the individual, I hope that in a few years that will no longer be necessary. I hope that Armenia will be in a position to be fully self-sufficient, to be able to take care of its citizens, both in Yerevan and those on the border, and I hope that we won't be sitting here talking about security issues.